What's going on guys, this is Peter here and you are watching my Slaver Zigzag Guide. Probably the most famous and maybe the biggest challenge of all the dungeons. This place is special compared to the other dungeons for several reasons. First of all, there isn't the classic 1st, 2nd, 3rd level here. Technically there is an entrance level. Then you can enter different portals leading to different areas. Uh, there is a Justice here Tomnis level. Forge White's level and Salvat Arms level and once you have completed all these you can enter Duncan the Black's level. This may sound way too complicated but in reality it's not and luckily there is a chest at each boss so you can expect some loot every now and then. The most famous skin is the Voltaic Spear of course, it may drop from any of the boss chests but there are other rare skins as well like the Pyroclastic Axe, or the Saurian Sight, Stormbow, Draconic Ages, Amethyst Ages and so on. If you want to save uh, yourself some blood, sweat and tears, do the first levels in normal mode and only switch to hard mode when you do the Duncan's level. This is the best tip I can give you, there are plenty of fools with uh, resurrection skills, uh, some players like to bring uh, frozen soil to counter that and you will see I won't use it uh, in this video but this is just personal preference. If any of my heroes would die while Frozen Soil is up, we can't resurrect them in this case. Also you must micro it all the time or the healer will use it every 30 seconds. Another frequently suggested skill is the one called Swap. And I don't think this is a must have, you see my party did quite well without it. Another optional skill in my opinion. Alright, let's see the builds now. I wanted to bring a build which is very beginner friendly and widely available for everyone. This is the good old boring Sinato Spirits build. Spirits deal a lot of armor ignoring damage, uh, Techno Bubble can shut down whole groups with the Daze condition and also don't forget Spirits are great mid shields too, as long as the enemies are hitting the Spirits your group is safe. My first three heroes are all Mesmers. They are the meta these days, there is no surprise here. I choose uh, two research mess and one ineptitude hero, pure DPS, coaster shutdown, blind, interrupts, the bread and butter for all meta teams. The next two heroes are elementalists, glimmering mark is an underrated skill, it can out damage a lot of other heroes, blinding surge helps uh, reduce the incoming damage, this hero also got some healing skills just to help out the beep necro if needed. The next hero is another meta, a soul twisting ritualist, the master of party wide defense and finally the bloodiest power necro to heal the party and give the always hungry mesmers and allays the energy regen they deserve. Ok so you will see Slaver's Exile is a tough place and it can kick you in the ass if you come here unprepared, especially Duncan's level in hard mode uh, can be quite deadly for beginners, but I hope the next few tips will help you. So tip number 1, bring Consets, Pecans, Summoning Stones and Death Penalty Removers. Of course this guide was made without Cons and Pecans, but you don't have to choose the hard way. Concepts are widely available these days and they can really make a huge difference. My next tip is to use your flat bow or long bow as often as you can and try to separate the enemy groups. It's super easy to overgrow in this dungeon and if you have a similar playstyle to mine and you grow the whole room to fill the YOLO. Sadly the YOLO here doesn't work, uh, well maybe in normal mode but definitely not in hard mode. So we must slow down, see the patrols. Black heroes behind, prequel spirits, etc. These will all help. Ok next tip, when you are facing stone summits, always focus on their warders. Surprisingly only this one has a high AOE damage and quite easy to take him out of combat uh, with the techno bubble. Uh, also try to put today's condition on the stone summit dominators and dreamers because uh, these have the hard res and as long as they are alive you can't win the battle. Of course the monks are a priority too. Best if you can cover a whole group with the techno bubble and keep spamming it all the time. The warriors, the rangers, so the non coaster classes aren't really a priority, focus on the coasters instead. Another tip and I think this will be quite a surprise for many of you, always get the blessings from the beacon of Drokner even if you have maxed these titles. Uh, why am I saying this? Because every 25 kills you gain 5% morale boost in normal mode and 7% in hard mode. 
or in other words, free test penalty removal for the whole party every 25 kills. Alright, these were the most general tips I could give you, and if you are only interested in a specific level of the video, check the timestamps and now let the fun begin. So here we are, Ambro Grotto, first we must make our way to the dungeon, Sadie Slaver Zigzai is located on the other side of uh, Burden Cascades, and it takes around 4 minutes to reach it. There are a few of these uh, skag creatures on the way, not dangerous at all and probably in normal mode you can simply outrun them uh, with fallback and some hero management. There isn't much to talk about in this part, see you in the dungeon. Like I said, the first part is like an entrance level, you get the last Hierophant quest automatically and you can choose now which boss to do first. All of them except Duncan of course, uh, you know Duncan's level is closed until all of his henchmen are defeated. Justice here Tomnis was the closest, so I choose him first, go through the portal and get the blessing. On this level 2 and on other levels as well, you, you will notice many of these spirits. These were created by Duncan probably to make the adventurers life short. Mesmer heroes destroy them fast anyway, but they can do some minor damage if you go close to them. Ok, the first group is close, uh, I will start with the warder, then deal with the monks after. A pretty good practice to be honest, if you can't beat them easily in normal mode, change your hero setup and come back with an improved one. The next room is tricky, easy to overgrow here, switch to your bow and pull group after group. Ok, the room is clear now, let's move on. Even more enemies ahead, uh, lure them out, don't rush in, wretched wolves hit hard but the spirit of displacement will save the day. You see a healer from the other team messing up, this can happen sadly but always be ready to retreat and run back to safety. Area map on the left, waste of time if you follow this guide, let's keep right and continue the grind. Guess what's next? Uh, lure the monsters out. Yeah, this is a pretty nasty view and my pulling skills aren't the best either. This is probably two or three groups now. Uh, luckily normal mode is more accepting when it comes to mistakes. And here we are, the boss room, careful grows are must have here. Poor Master of Whispers was unlucky, used beep too many times and probably got hit by some spells in the meanwhile. Rest in peace Master. You see guys, this is why it's a great idea to have uh, several rest kills in your hero team, mistakes happen and you can fix them like this. Finally, Justice here Tumnus is defeated, the chest has appeared, but 
we must clear the room for safety. Okay, it's safe now, get your drops and let's get the other boss as well. In the next one or two minutes we must do some cardio and walk all the way back to the first room and clear the right side of this level. I like these perfectly bought up coaster ropes, techno bubble all day, every day. Right, this nice downhill is a sign to slow down and get ready for the boss. In this room we must destroy a lot of uh, wretched wolves too. Make sure you have all the soul twisting spirits up when you are fighting them. They like to fight close to each other, giving our mesmers the day of their lives. Ineptitude, Energy Surge, Wandering Eye are all super effective in these situations. Defeat all the wolves and other groups in this room before you go for the boss. By the way, his name is Rand Stormweaver, Ranger boss and he has the high ground. So don't try to go in without all the defensive spirits you have, I guess he can one shot coasters. So pre all the spirits and a groovy with Techno Bubble. That's it, destroy the extra group now, get the chest reward and walk all the way back to the portal. I haven't mentioned yet but good to know, the portals will be closed unless you have defeated the boss on that level. Moving on, the next one is Selvet Arms level. First thing first, get the blessing and keep west till you find some stone summits. Don't be distracted by the spirits, they are everywhere but easy to destroy. After this first easy group, get ready for a very crowded area and I think you know the tactics already, switch to your longbow or flatbow and pull a group away from the rest. Well, this wasn't an efficient way of pulling, in this case you can always go back a little bit more and fight the mobs from a new spot. Room is cleared, pick up the dungeon key. If you play carefully here you can avoid two groups and save a minute or two. Only deal with the last group at the dungeon lock.
The next area can be quite a difficult one due to the enemies having the high ground and spirits not wanting to attack upwards. Do what I do over the stone summit and flag heroes back. The monsters will follow and this way we can neutralize the handicap. Plenty of undead in the next area, the chain clerics heal each other well, also crypt slashers pop ups, so don't aggro the whole map here like I did. A lot of clerics again, plus a patrolling stone summit group. It felt too much, so we retreated. The clerics won't follow, luckily. Uh, you know, they are stationary fools. Again, let's deal with the undead first, then we can finish off the stone summit. Yeah, this is the way to go, don't fight both of them at the same time. Okay, we are closing to Salvatar now. There is a mini challenge here, the gate only opens once all of the spawns are defeated. Shock phantoms, raids, all types of undead. Make sure your defensive spirits are up and put Tacto Bubble on as many mobs as you can. Finally the gate opens, but don't rush into Servatarm, let's play it smartly and patiently. I'm gonna put some uh, crypto raids first and see what happens. Yeah, the stone summit healers intervene as expected and the boss group joins the fight. No problem, Servatarm isn't too dangerous in normal mode, has some uh, necro hexes and stuff, but definitely doable even without much preparation. And that's it, the chest of the slaver is here, now let's clear the rest of the room and get the reward. Ok, we can run back now and do the next level which is Forge White. First of all, let's get the blessing. So Forge Wise level now, there are plenty of elementals here and this place is very similar to the catacombs of Katandrak's dungeon. Roaring Eaters, Burning Spirits, Flowstone Elementals. Uh, so rule of thumb, defeat the Flowstone Elementals as fast as possible. Savannah Heat hurts badly and it's much worse than Searing Flames. So advise to precause the ST hero spirits before big fights of course and use techno bubble on as many coasters as you can. These two things can be lifesavers. Plenty of elementals here, try to spread your team as much as possible and don't make the same mistakes like I did. I didn't catch Savannah Heat in time, neither did my heroes. There is a stone summit border too, meaning we've got spiked perfectly. Luckily some of my heroes survived and 
We still have rest kills, but lesson learned, go even slower in this room. At least you can see what uh, can go wrong and how to deal with uh, bad situations. Anyway, flagging heroes out of danger always helps. The whole team is alive now. Let's give some regen to the guys and continue the grind. Finally we arrive at this big room with uh, Forge Imps and Stone Summit. I highly recommend you clear the group on the left first and only deal with the Imps after. This way you can avoid unnecessary overgrowth. Ok now we can do the Imps and destroy the Dark Watcher too who will drop the dungeon key. Alright, let's walk all the way back and clear the other side of the, of the dungeon as well. This is a big pile of fire elementals, precoz the ST spirits if you want to succeed and give this flow stone LA some well deserved dazed conditions. You can open the dungeon lock if you want to, but if you don't open it, then the stone summits can't really damage you with attacks. This is a safe way to clear the rest shrine. By the way, this is one giant room with like 100 monsters in it. Very easy to aggro two groups, even if you have the best intentions to go slowly. If you would wipe here, don't worry, the rest shrine is closed. Remove uh, some death penalty and try again. The patrolling group will get here too soon, best to run back to safety. And finally we reach Forge White's room and the next rush shrine. A few words about the boss, he's a powerful elementalist boss, has like a maximum fire magic and water magic and if you don't flag each of your heroes apart, he will definitely spike you down. Furthermore, he has some stone summits helping him, monks, mesmers, etc. So try to clear the other groups in advance and keep Forge White's group for last. If too many monsters would be attacking you, simply unflag heroes and flag them back to safety. Regenerate HP and energy and continue the fight. That's it, only Forge White and his group left. I'm gonna spread my heroes and precost all the spirits. Let's agree with Technobabble, this will slow down the coasters nicely and focus on the Dominator, Warder and Defender. Don't bother with the boss, 
few of the small ones aren't defeated. This is it folks, Forge Bite is done, get the chest reward and if you have only Dunkel left, map travel back so we can switch to hard mode. So if you want an easy hard mode completion of this dungeon, this is the simplest way, first level is in normal mode and only Duncan in hard mode. By the way, I'm not going to change anything for Duncan, no frozen soil, not even swap. Uh, but trust me, this is going to work. So once you have activated hard mode, just leave Umbrella Grotto and go to the dungeon once more. Here we are, Duncan's level, get the blessing of course and put down all the defensive spirits you have. This first patrolling group will be a great test. If you can beat them relatively easily, chances are you can finish the whole thing. Once your team is ready, you grow with Technobabble and make sure to use Technobabble on recharge. Focus on the dreamers and on the monks and as long as they stand like this, Close, close to each other, we have an easy task. Of course they will resurrect each other uh, since we don't have frozen soil, but this is not that bad and at least we still have a chance to res our own heroes too. And that's it, the first group is done, but now listen carefully, you must go really slowly, much slower than usual, the whole level is full of these invisible, restless dead creatures. They have uh, powerful touch skills and not even the ST spirits can protect against them. We must be well prepared all the time. This tactic worked nicely, you go ahead and heroes are in safety. You can scan the area of uh, any hidden groups like this. This group on the left might be skipped but I wanted to be sure, so I will take them down. There is another restless death group close to them, best if you can pull those away. The next room is a tricky one, you might grow two stone stamina groups by accident and also these touchers can mess things up. So I highly recommend you get the stone summits on the left and only go further once they are not in the way. Another big group from the bridge, prepare and give them all you've got. The next area is a more difficult one than I remembered, somehow we overrode like 10 of these touchers. And even though we are killing them, our only dedicated healer couldn't really keep up with all the armor ignoring damage. Um, so yeah, we've made it of course, but none of my leftover heroes had any rest skills. 
I had no other choice than let my character die and come back after resurrection. No problem, at least you see the bad examples too. Even more undead now. The stairs area is also tricky, reveal any pop-ups and if no more left, prepare for a big fight. I'm gonna keep the warder dazed as long as I can, this way no AOE can hit my team. And now guess what? Even more undead. Once you reach the top of the hill, you will see several stone summit groups. Sadly, they like to fight side by side, which sucks in hard mode, so try your best and separate them. Of course, one of the healers brought us the second group too, so time to retreat. I'm going to wait till the second group leaves and I'll go to the first group again. Once there is no more restless dead in this corner, we can focus on the last stone summit group. Just a few more undead and only Duncan left. A few things about Duncan, he is a ritualist, has a lot of HP of course, and he can reflect 100% of all the damage back to the source, and there are many spirits surrounding him and those spirits respawn after short periods of time. And this is why people rely on Swap, Swap is a great way to teleport spirits uh, to any other location. Since I'm a primary necro and has an SOS build, as a secondary wasn't an option for me, and I didn't want to give swap to any of my heroes, so instead I will show you another solution. So my Duncan tactics are the following, once there are no more restless dead around, flag your heroes, Mesmer's frontline, Ellie's healer's backline, and it's important that only you or maybe one or two heroes can reach Duncan. If you go straight against him, his skill will reflect too much damage back to you and your party and kill the whole team in the meanwhile. Instead, we do it slowly and in a safe way. This SOS build deals nice damage to him and sometimes one of my heroes will help him as well. The rest of the team will take care of the respawning spirits and basically do only a small portion of the jump. If you want more damage, just put one of the Mesmer heroes flex closer to him. If you're running out of energy or your healers can keep up with the pace, leave Duncan and retreat. He won't follow you for long. And remember guys, the Bip Necro gets his energy from killing fools and if there are no kills, there is no energy for him, so definitely keep an eye on your Bip Necro while doing Duncan. Anyway, just put down the spirits, use armor of unfeeling, teleport spirits out of Duncan's uh, spirit rift and repeat it till he gives up. With these tactics I managed to beat Duncan in 5 minutes, it was basically Raza and my spirits job. So yeah, you can basically solo him with an SOS build like this.
now get the chest and if you want some easy money, sell the dead more armor remnants. They are worth some Ectos, 30 or 40 something. By the way, good to know, if you wait till the timer hits zero, you get teleported back to the dungeon's entrance and you can get the quest reward like this. I guess walking back and going through the portal also works, but I haven't tried. Otherwise look around, this is a unique place and there is a hidden room if you go back to the corner and turn left. Alright folks, this was my not too short Slaver Zigzag guide, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and as always, see you next time.